Hey everybody, I'm Miss Kim, the Director of Family Ministry at Caw Prairie Community Church in Lenexa, Kansas. And I'm so happy that you're here to join me for week three of our series, Brave. This month, we have been talking about what it takes to do brave things for God. And the first week we talked about David being anointed by God, that um, Samuel the prophet listened to God and he went in search of the next king of Israel and that was David. And even though David didn't look like he would have been a king, God knew his heart. And so God knows who we are and he blesses us and keeps us, gives us bravery to, to be able to do awesome things for him. Last week, we continued talking about David and his battle with Goliath. And some of you probably know that story and how it ended. And of course, David was victorious and God gave David gifts that he could use to defeat the giant and to, uh, to continue being brave for him. So this week we have another story about David and it's a really good one. But before we start, I want us to take a minute to get up and to get our wiggles out and groove to this song. Right, so this week's story has to do with mercy. Do any of you know what mercy means? Mercy is like having compassion. It's like showing someone that you are giving them another chance even when maybe they don't deserve it. Um, sometimes it means letting them out of a punishment. It means telling them we forgive them even if what they did to us was not nice at all. So having mercy on other people is really important. And of course, God had mercy on us when he sent us Jesus. And we are so thankful for that. 
in our story today, David has to show mercy. And sometimes showing mercy to other people is something that makes us really brave because it can be really hard sometimes. All right, so go ahead and grab a Bible. If you have one near you, just use that. If you need to pause it, go ahead and pause and grab a Bible. But if you're on the live chat and pause it, it might be a little bit off from the rest of the chat. So it's up to you. You can just listen to me read as well. But if you want to grab a Bible, you can. And remember, when we're looking up a story in the Bible, this is how we do it, okay? We've got one book here with lots of books on the inside. There's an Old Testament and the New Testament. And the Old Testament has a lot of really good information for us that gives us backstory about the culture and, and the way that Jesus might have grown up um, and the culture that he lived in and, and the beginning and all of these wonderful, wonderful things that we need to know. And the New Testament is where we meet Jesus. And it's amazing. So if you've never read a Bible before, start there, please, with the New Testament. Jesus is who you want to who you want to learn about who you want to know 100 percent and the and everything else is amazing to know as well the story that we're talking about today is from the old testament and so the book that we're looking for in the old testament is called first samuel so you're going to look up first samuel and you can use a table of contents or you can flip through or if you know the song that the books of the bible you can find it that way too and then in first samuel and all the other books in here we've got big numbers and those are the chapter numbers and then the little numbers are the verse numbers all right so we're looking for first samuel chapter 24 so you're looking for the big 24 and then we're doing verses 1 through 18. Before I start to read, I want to give you a little backstory here. So we had the two weeks we've already talked about. God anointed David as king. He was just a boy. And then he fought uh, Goliath and won. And so then what happened after that, basically, is that David gained a lot of popularity. And Saul, the king, even though he liked David and David had helped him before, he became very jealous of David. So that's not a good thing and he decided he needed to kill David. So that's a lot of story we missed out on, but that's where we get today, all right? So 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse one through 18. After Saul returned from fighting the Philistines, he was told that David had gone into the wilderness of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 of the best soldiers from the whole nation of Israel. He started out to look for David and his men. He planned to look near the rocky cliffs of the wild goats. He came to some sheep pens along the way. A cave was there. Saul went in to go to the toilet. David and his men were far back in the cave. David's men said, This is the day the Lord told you about. He said to you, I will hand your enemy over to you. Then you can deal with him as you want to. So David came up close to Saul without being seen. He cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Later felt sorry that he had cut off a corner of Saul's robe. He said to his men, may the Lord keep me from doing a thing like that again to my master. He is the Lord's anointed king. So I promise that I will never lay my hand on him. The Lord has anointed him. David said that to correct his men. He wanted them to know that they should never suggest harming the king. He didn't allow them to attack Saul. So Saul left the cave and went on his way. Then David went out of the cave. He called out to Saul, King Saul, my master. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down. He lay down flat with his face toward the ground. He said to Saul, why do you listen when men say David is trying to harm you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord handed you over to me in the cave. Some of my men begged me to kill you, but I didn't. I said, I will never lay my hand on my master. He is the Lord's anointed king. Look, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but I didn't kill you. See, there is nothing in my hand that shows I am guilty of doing anything wrong. I haven't turned against you. I haven't done anything to harm you, but you are hunting me down. You want to kill me. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord pay you back because of the wrong things you have done to me but I won't do anything to hurt you people say evil acts come from those who do evil so I won't do anything to hurt you King Saul who are you trying to catch who do you think you are chasing I'm nothing but a dead dog or a flea 
May the Lord be our judge. May he decide between us. May he consider my case and stand up for me. May he show that I'm not guilty of doing anything wrong. May he save me from you. When David finished speaking, Saul asked him a question. He said, my son David, is that your voice? And Saul wept out loud. You are a better person than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I've treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good things you did to me. The Lord handed me over to you, but you didn't kill me. Wow, what a great story again. And you know what? David had mercy on Saul, didn't he? Even though Saul was trying to kill him and David had the chance to kill Saul and he didn't, he showed mercy on him. So let's review the story just a little bit here, okay? I want you to, to say these out loud with who you're sitting with, or you can type them in the chat if you're watching this during our live chat time. But I wanna know how many troops did Saul send after David? There's a lot of guys, a lot of, a lot of men at that time, and it was just men, 3,000 people. Could you imagine 3,000 people coming after you and not just like to look for you to say, hey, let's play. These guys were ready to kill you if they found you. That's a lot of people. Saul was sending 3,000 men after David. Whew. Okay, and where did Saul and David end up together? Where did they end up together? In a cave. They ended up in a cave. Crazy, right? And then how David's men wanted him to do what? to play with Saul, to be nice to Saul, to run away. They wanted him to kill Saul because then they knew it would all be over because David was supposed to be king anyway, so she should just kill him. Well, obviously David had the chance to do that and he didn't. He showed mercy on Saul, which was amazing. So how did Saul then respond to David? Did he run away? Did he decide to kill David right there? No. He was really thankful that David spared his life, wasn't he? That was a really good example that David used his bravery to show that he showed mercy to Saul. And that was a good example for Saul to see. Okay, guys, I want you to just take a few minutes or a few seconds here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, put up a question here. And I want you to discuss at home or in the live chat. Whatever you're doing right now, you can do this. And I want you to talk about ways that you have shown mercy to someone before. So whether that's to a sibling or a friend or a parent or somebody who you had to forgive, somebody who you could have done something really mean to, but you just chose not to because you did, felt like it wasn't the right thing, even though you were mad at them for what they did to you. When have you shown mercy to others? Wow, guys, that's great. I'm sure that you all had some really awesome answers there. And I know that, that we've all showed mercy to people sometimes. And there's probably been times where we should have shown mercy and we chose not to. So we want to remember to be brave because it takes some bravery to show mercy, especially when our feelings are hurt or we're afraid or something. So, all right, guys, it's time for our big idea. So I want you to give me a drum roll. I want you to hit the heart button a bunch of times. And are you ready for this? Okay, today's big idea is we can show others mercy. We can show others mercy. God wants us to show others mercy. And remember, he showed us mercy. And so we, we want to make sure we're following his example. Awesome. Very good, guys. You know, uh, thank you guys for joining me this morning. I've been really enjoying this and I really want you to be a part of these lessons. So don't forget, if you wanna be involved in acting the story out, please let me know. Our story does change next week. We're not talking about David anymore. We're gonna talk about Esther, still brave, but just a different different uh, main character there. So if you wanna be involved, let me know and I'll get you the instructions for what the clips you need to film are. And don't forget that if you guys go to our website, there's this video, there's another video that's a little geared more for younger kids. It's real quick, but it tells a story, it's great. And then also we have a craft that Miss Sandy has come up from our curriculum and it's a fun thing you can do at home with your family. There's also some at home activities Miss Heather came up with from our curriculum that you can check out there. So make sure you go to our website to do that. And then also don't forget our social media pages that you can find out all sorts of awesome fun things that we're doing that we provide during the week. So just stay in touch and we, are, we hope to be able to see you guys again soon. And I would love for you before we pray to think about these things with me. All right, what part of today's story stood out to you the most? Who could you most relate to in our story today? 
And what is the hardest part about showing mercy? These are some big questions, but I want you to think about these and I want you to answer these with your family when the video is over or your friends, whoever you're watching it with. But let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to save us from sin. Please help us to remember we can show others mercy. Thank you for our time together today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks again, guys. I really hope you have a great week. And don't forget, if you want to be in the videos, let me know. I would love for you to be a part of this. And before we go, we do have one more fun song to do. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.